Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be giving you the CPA Canada module survival guide. It's going to go over things that will get you through with all the various modules, whether it's core one, core two, or any of the electives. If you like what you see, please subscribe and consider to give this video a thumbs up. So now let's talk about the topics I will be covering in this video. The first is going to be an overview of all the modules, and the second would be what resources are available to you, and then it's going to be how to study for the various modules, and then lastly it will be what to study for in the modules. Everything I say in this video is for CPA Ontario, so if you're in another province it might be a little bit different because the modules are governed by the provincial CPAs. So now let's go through an overview of all the CPA modules. They will all be eight weeks long with an exam on the ninth week. If you're taking an extended core one or core two, the timing would just be doubled and it will be a 16 week program with your exam on the 17th week. Each module comes with a workshop in the middle of the term, except for core one, where you actually get two workshops, one at the beginning when you start and another in the middle. These workshops are not meant to be an exam prep workshop, but they are mainly for you to develop your enabling competencies with a little technical review. You must attend these workshops to be eligible to write your exam at the end, so make sure you show up. You either get a pass or a fail on these workshops, based on your attendance and your participation. So make sure you're not going to be late for any of these sessions, because the session leader does need to take attendance at the beginning of the class, and then again at lunch, and then throughout the breaks as well, and they will be reporting anyone that is late to CPA, which could affect your passing mark. As long as you're not late and you don't distract other people in class, you're probably going to get the full marks and it's going to be okay. If you really can't make the CPA module workshops, make sure you email CPA to get an exception. If it's granted, you might be able to attend a workshop at a later date, or they can ask you to provide an alternative assignment instead. The format of these workshops in Ontario used to be in person at various hotel conference rooms of about 25 people, but has since been virtual since 2020 in groups of about 50 people. In the future, I'm not sure which format they'll keep, whether it's going to be going back to in-person or keeping it virtually, but as of 2022, it's currently all virtual. In terms of the weekly submissions, you need to hand in three things every single week. The first is your integrated problem. These are questions that are written in a short answer format where the questions are fairly directed and you know what they're asking for. Normally you get about five questions for these. The next is going to be a practice case, where the questions are going to be written in a case format for you to answer. Most of the time what the case is asking you to do is usually on the first page. A tip to remember is that if you don't submit anything, you don't get any of the solutions. So if there is a week where you're planning not to submit any cases, make sure you still submit a blank document so that you can get the solutions. And then the last submission for the week is to do 25 multiple choice questions. A tip for you is that there's going to be practice quizzes, which are the same questions as your actual quizzes you need to submit every week. But but they're just allowed for you to see the question in advance and take all the time you need before you answer them. The integrated problem and practice cases will be marked and feedback will be given on a weekly basis by the facilitator. The solutions will be released after the submission deadline. CPA actually suggests that it takes two hours to do the integrated problem and one hour to do the case, and then one hour for the multiple choice quizzes. However, when talking to many of the candidates, you're looking at probably double the time for all of them. One thing I want to remind you about is that for the practice case, Make sure by the end of your module, you kind of do cut it down back to an hour because on the final exam, if the case is one hour, you're not going to get any extra time to finish it. In the unfortunate event that you have to withdraw from the module, make sure you do it before the fourth Friday of the module or else you're going to be charged for an attempt for doing the module. You only get three attempts to do the module, so make sure you use them wisely. In terms of being eligible for a refund on the module, that really depends on the region or province to determine your eligibility. However, if you withdraw after the fourth Friday of the module, you're not going to be getting a refund and you will be charged for an attempt. Now let's move on to the candidate guide. This is essentially your student handbook that tells you all the rules. In terms of the deadlines, any late assignments will not be marked, and all assignments have to be submitted in D2L. It's only if you have technical issues that you can email your facilitator prior to the submission deadline with your solutions. And again, it's, you have to email your facilitator before the submission deadline, or else again, it will not be marked. Then once technical issues are resolved, most of the time the facilitator will reopen your Dropbox and let you submit the cases again. To be eligible to write the module exams, you need to get 75%. Once you hit that 75% mark, your module marks don't matter anymore. It's only your exam mark that determines if you pass or fail the module. It's not that hard to get the 75% because attending the workshops and completing surveys also count towards your mark. A tip is that you can technically stop submitting all your cases after you get your 75%, but that's not recommended because it's always good to get more feedback on your cases. Facilitators who mark your cases have four days to return your case after the submission deadline, not when you actually submit. Some markers will return their cases really quickly and others will take the full four days. It really depends on how many students the markers have and how busy they are. 
So don't get too fussed if you don't get your cases back within one or two days. The naming convention for the cases that you're going to submit are going to be your last name, first name, PC for practice case, IP for integrated problem, and then your week number. Lastly, the candidate guide would also include a word limit on how much you can write. Normally, I haven't seen this as an issue for anyone writing their assignments. As mentioned before, at the end of the module, there's going to be a four hour exam, which can be a combination of multiple choice or cases. To know how much of your exam is multiple choice and how much is it is case, you should look at the module blueprints to tell you. Currently in 2022, Core 1 and Core 2 have 75 multiple choice with one case, whereas all the other electives have 15 multiple choice and two cases. In addition, all exams here in Ontario are written in exam centers. So now let's talk about what resources are available to you while completing your CPA modules. The first is going to be Notion. This is going to be your best friend. It has a learning ebook, which is also essentially your textbook. And then inside the ebook, for every chapter, there's also going to be chapter summaries that essentially summarizes like 15, 20 pages into one or two pages. And then also in Notion is going to be the Accounting Handbook, Tax Act, and Audit Guide. These three books are going to be provided to you during the exam. However, your ebook is not going to be provided to you, so you need to know that one. The next key resource available to you is the CPA Survival Guide, which has everything you need in terms of telling you when everything is due and which chapters to read. There's also a calendar provided to you by CPA that already has plotted down all the due dates for assignments, so you don't have to do that, and you can just use their Excel calendar. To find the CPA Survival Guide, you'll first go to D2L and then PEP Introductions, and then you should be able to see the Survival Guides. Other resources available would be the official D2L forums that CPA provides. Those are monitored by CPA, so for sure you're going to get a response back from there. Next would be your CPA facilitator. That's the person that marks your cases every week and they're required to reply to your emails within 24 hours. And then your session leaders whenever you have the workshops. For any of the resources that I talk about in this video that's not in D2L, I'll try to provide a link in the description below. Other useful resources for you would be the IT support. So if you have any technical questions, make sure you go to this website and you don't ask your facilitator because I don't think they're going to be able to help you on that. In terms of studying for the exam, there's also retired exams in D2L and other practice multiple choice questions in your ebook. There's also the exam reference schedules, so you want to take a look at that so you know what's available to you in the exam. And then there's also the competency map, which I'll be talking to you guys a little bit later about and how to navigate through that because that's a very useful resource that tells you what to study for. And then lastly, there's also unofficial CPA, WhatsApp, and Facebook study groups. In these study groups, you'll be able to discuss with other candidates about the submissions and support each other throughout the CPA process. As mentioned before, I'll have a link of all the resources in the description below. So I get asked this question a lot, how do I study for the exam? Well, if you want to know how I would study for the exam, I would essentially read the ebook or the university textbook, and then I'll make notes every week and I'll do the readings based on the survival guide. Then I will debrief each week's cases, and this is a really important step, so make sure you do it correctly. If you're not sure how to debrief a case, I have a video on that, so make sure you check it out. As part of your debrief, you'll probably also read your facilitator feedback. Then next, you might want to redo any of the multiple choice questions that you've done in the past. If you have any questions on how to study for multiple choice questions, I have a video on that as well, so make sure you also check that out. Then prior to your exams, you want to make sure you practice with the retired exams. And then if you have any questions, you could always post it on the CPA D2L forums or any of the study groups. Another very common question I always get is, what do I study for for the exam? There's so many topics out there. So what I'd suggest is that you want to first study all the topics that came up in your cases and in your multiple choice questions. And then once you're done that, you would go into your competency map and kind of go through what are the key topics that you need to study and which ones you don't need to study. So that it gives you a guide on what to study. No one really has a crystal ball on this, but this would be my approach on how to study for any module exam. I'll show you an example of how to use the competency guide on the next slides, but I just wanted to let you know that currently there's a 2020 version of the competency map, and then there's also a 2022 version of the competency map that isn't effective until January 1st, 2023. On either one of the competency maps, there's going to be a section that tells you how much of a technical area you need to know for a specific module, and then another section that tells you specific topics within a technical area that you need to know for each module. So here you can see in the 2022 version of the competency map section 5, I've highlighted the competency of evaluates treatment for non-routine transaction. 
Then across the top, you could see what level of competency you need to achieve for each one of the modules. Currently, I'm in the assurance section, so it's just highlighting the assurance competency. A means you need to know it like the back of your hand. B means you have to be okay at it, kind of good at it. And then C means you kind of just need to know a little bit about it. In the competency map, they actually define the levels A, B, C a little bit better than I do. So make sure you take a read of that and you know what they mean. So now that you know, in the assurance module, you need to know how to evaluate treatments for non-routine transactions. What does that mean? So then you read the outcomes on the right, which are the expectations of what you should be able to do. A says, identifies non-routine transactions by making reference to the business model and industry, knowing that a transaction that is non-routine for one environment may be routine in another. And then so on and so forth, as you read through the different bullet points, you'll kind of know what is expected of you when you're met with non-routine transactions. However, then you'll be faced with the question of what are non-routine transactions? Is there any more guidance on what that actually means? And the good news is yes. If we go to the next slide, here in section 6 of the competency map, you'll notice that they broke down what it means to evaluate treatments of non-routine transactions into specific topics. So you'll see topics such as pensions, health for sale assets, foreign currency translations, and business combinations. For each of them, you'll see how well you need to know them for the core modules and then for the electives. A lot of people also ask me about tax topics and if they need to study those tax topics or not. I just want to put this slide up to show people that section six in the competency map also highlights what specific topics in terms of tax you need to study. Thanks again for watching my video and hopefully you've learned a little bit about the CPA modules. If you liked what you saw, please subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. In the description below, I'll try to put in links to the things that I've referenced. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments.